Brothers and sisters, I want to share with you this morning some wisdom from a huge spiritual giant. You've often heard me maybe reference him before as Blessed Marmion, a great Irish monk who was the head of a Maritsu famous monastery in Belgium. Uh, he was originally a priest of the Diocese of Dublin and then after having uh, what he says an experience of infinity, he, he had this mystical experience that marked his life and haunted him and, yeah, and he sought then to really go further in a detachment from things of the world and into a monastic life to, to pray for souls and to, and to just to dedicate his life to, to a deeper way of conversion, you could say in one sense and uh, the life of prayer for the world and, and for souls. And Blessed Marmion actually was a great spiritual father of Blessed, not Blessed, Saint Pope John Paul II, who, who credited him as inaugurating him, Pope Saint John Paul, into spiritual things unlike anybody else. And many popes kept his books at their bedside for a while. So he's a, he's a giant in the spiritual life. And Mother Teresa of Calcutta um, said that the book Union with God, Letters to Spir of Spiritual Direction, was, mo was probably the only book or one of the only books that her nuns were allowed to keep because of their vow of poverty. They, when they move from convent, they just bring a little plastic bag. They don't, they don't own anything. They really practice this radical poverty of Christ. But this book was clearly a treasure and the great saints can point us towards the, you know, the right path and the right minds uh, to guide us into to, to truth and to the beauty of our faith. And so I want to quote something by him, but first I want to say a few things. We, we've been saying the last few days, we've been thinking about mercy in this month of mercy, the sacred heart. We've looked at, you know, just the, the obstacles that can come up to mercy. We mentioned a while back about pride and I, I will, I do want to do a few videos on pride and envy and we'll get to that eventually. But, you know, we looked at, essentially about the whole idea of trust, that the trust is an antidote to this wound of sin in us, you know, that the causes of distrust in God's goodness. And one of the things I have mentioned that when we're growing in the spiritual life, we grow in a keener awareness of God. And by contrast, that light of God as it enters our soul and our conscience and our mind starts to bring with it a certain knowledge, uh, knowledge of self. You know, it's like uh, St. John of the Cross, you say like a window, you know, when the sun hits it, you could see all the dirt on the windows, on the on the on the window, on the glass. But before that, you couldn't. So it's kind of like that. Like when God comes closer to us in the spiritual life, we can then grow in a deeper self knowledge. And um, part of one of the temptations then of people growing closer to the Lord and advancing in the spiritual life could be a temptation to rigidity and harshness and self righteousness, uh, a real sense of looking at oneself and, and, and their life, how good it is to the Lord. It's like the man in the temple, you know, Lord, I fast, I pray, I, I pay my tithes, I, I, you know, I go to church, I keep the commandments, all this stuff. And while at the same time looking down on somebody else um, and, and taking pleasure in it, you know, uh, which is pride, uh, because it's a, you know, a puffing up of one's superiority over somebody else. This is where the demons fell and they therefore incited us into the same sin of this self-seeking uh, importance over that of others. And so we can be tempted as we come to know sin, we see it, we see it more clearly in others. You know, people who are not in their faith um, or, or don't really stand for one direct truth, they can accept everything therefore. So they, they can, you know, in one sense, it's kind of miserable because you have nothing to be passionate about. Uh, you have no sense of truth and something to defend and, and to give your life for. But, you know, you accept everything and, and, and they can be very non-judgmental and, and we could learn something maybe from the way that they, they are. Um, there's something good maybe in it, even though it becomes perverted because they accept all that is out there, uh, all sorts of behaviors, etc., etc., that are not compatible with the gospel. Um, but one of the things then is that in contrast to people growing in the spiritual life, taking their faith seriously can be a bit harsh and hard because they, 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 they tend to look at the sin of others very easily, more easily. And on it's because they see their own sin more easily. And sometimes we could project the anger we have towards ourselves, towards others, you know. And so, so this can really lead us to a harsh image of God and also eat away at the experience of love. 
Um, and this is why the law, the sin could be dangerous for us because when we see sin, we and, and because of the law of the things that are wrong, if we don't put it in the right context, if we don't put it in the context of, of God's love and God's mercy, and we could then become very judgmental and harsh, and therefore we can crush somebody else away from the faith instead of inviting them to conversion and to mercy. Because we have to study the way Jesus approached people in their sin. He loved them out of it, and we have to do the same. And so Marmion will recommend to us, he says, you know, you look so much at your littleness, at your miseries and at your shortcomings, and too little at Jesus. This is his line. It's beautiful. We could say the same, like we, you look too much at the littleness of others, their miseries, their shortcomings, and too little at Jesus. In other words, you, you might, we might forget that Jesus is in their life and to pray for them instead of cursing them.